you're about to learn the real reason why Faker is the greatest player to ever play League of Legends. When people think of Faker, his ludicrous mechanics and famous outplays come to mind. Oh, look what? at the class, look at the moves! Faker, what was that? What most people don't know, however, is being flashy is not the reason Faker is so incredible. We'd argue that it's the smaller, subtle details in his gameplay that are completely invisible to the average viewer that allow Faker to reach levels of success unseen elsewhere in League or even any other game throughout the year. It's the invisible moments you don't see unless you know what to look for, and you're paying very close attention to what has kept Faker at the top for over a decade of competition. Today, we're going to be revealing the skills nobody can see, which Faker is using to dominate the best players in the world. So let's get right into it. And what better way to illustrate just how good Faker is at subtle decision making than during his laning phase versus Chovy, one of the world's most dominant lane players. But before we get into the matchup, we want you to be able to follow along easily. So first, we're going to simplify one of the more ambiguous terms that you'll often hear, priority. In League's professional play, the word priority gets thrown around a lot. And unless you really understand it, it can be very confusing as it's used to describe a variety of things. There's early lane priority, dragon and herald priority, then in the later stages of the game, there's mid priority, etc. It all can be a bit overwhelming. So let's make things easy and simplify lane phase priority to something like taking turns. And you'll soon see why Faker is so good at this. A turn is whenever you're able to freely move from the lane, be it roam, recall, ward, etc. And the way you get that opportunity is by crashing a wave at your opponent's tower. This does one of two things. First, it keeps your opponent locked in lane since they have to sit there and farm the wave at their turret. Two, it causes a bounce back wave. Anytime you crash a wave at a tower, the next few waves will usually slowly bounce back to your side of the lane. This way, after you're done doing whatever you chose to do, you can come back to lane without having missed too much farm. It's a fairly simple concept that many of you may already know about. But what separates players like Faker from me and you is how he actually puts this concept into action. Faker specifically uses a lot of small things and techniques to get more turns than his opponents and utilizes those opportunities to their maximum potential. And to show you how, we head back into our matchup versus Chovy. What's so impressive about this game is that Faker will go from being tower dove at level 3 and falling desperately far behind to then winning this game in under 10 minutes. Here's how. After dying, Faker teleports back to lane and begins slow pushing, hoping to crash a big wave eventually. When Chovy's Victor is back in lane, Faker has to deal with the problem. To be really good at League of Legends, you want to understand not just your own goals, but what your opponent wants to do as well. Chovy wants to use his lead to set up a freeze. Not only would this make Cassidy susceptible to ganks, but it also denies Faker from ever getting a turn to then leave lane. If Faker can't crash the wave, well, he can't recall, which means he can't buy the items Cassidy desperately needs to lane properly. The thing is, Faker knows Chovy's intentions and immediately calls his jungler over to help. Normally, this may seem like a waste of time and a failure of a gank. Elise and Cassidy have no hope of ever killing Victor, especially with Chovy so close to his tower. But killing him was not the point. Junking him a bit was more than enough. This way, Faker now has enough lane pressure to be able to finish shoving the wave, earning himself a free turn to do as he wishes. His initial goal was to set up a recall timing so he could recover in his lane. But instead, he notices the fight that was happening in bot lane and uses this turn to rotate there instead. He manages to help his team kill Sejuani and then heads back to mid. And as we mentioned earlier, when he gets back, there's a wave bouncing back to him. So he managed to impact the map while losing very little farm in the process. That being said, while he was gone, Chovy managed to crash the wave, so now it's his his turn. Let's see what he does with his timing compared to Faker. He moves over to help his team secure the first dragon. Not bad, right? Wrong. To many of us, that may seem like a natural move, but Chovy just made a game-losing mistake without even realizing it. You see, technically, he didn't even need to help his team. T1 was in no position to contest the Drake anyways, so Chovy was better off basing for Lost Chapter or some other item with his turn to leave lane. While this may seem like a minuscule mistake at worst, to Faker, this is an opportunity that will seal Genji's fate in this game. While Chovy was off at Dragon, Faker gets to push in the wave, earning himself another free turn. This time, he actually uses the opportunity to base and get some power for himself. Then he comes back to lane. Notice what he immediately does. His bot lane is building a slow push to potentially set up a tower dive. So Faker just R's into the wave in front of Chovy's face and tanks a bunch of damage just so he can push. Victor, without having recalled for items, can't stop him from doing this. Faker just got another free turn to move and impact the map. So Faker syncs up with his team and they coordinate a dive to triple kill Genji's bot lane and jungle 
and that's that. The game at this point is effectively over, and Faker managed to secure the win even as a level 7 Kassadin, a champion that's supposed to be weak at this point in the game. This is what being a great player is about. Understanding taking turns is easy, everyone can see the results of the roam, but few people actually pay attention to those subtle moments that led up to those map plays. But when you watch these players in action, try to pay attention to how they got their turns in the first place, and then watch the differences in what they actually do with their opportunities. Pay close attention to Faker's crashes when you watch him play, and you will be amazed at what you can learn and the types of decisions you can pull off to win even in your own games. And that brings us to this guide's special skill cap tip. There was a little extra nugget of information we can learn from Faker here, which you can use in almost every single one of your solo queue games. Mid laners have an important timing window right around 6 minutes into the game. This is generally the time when you get to level 6, as we saw here. Getting your ult is a huge power spike, especially for mid laners who tend to have some of the best ultimates in the game. So getting a turn to freely move from your lane at this time is a huge deal. But what is just as important to know is that the Honey Fruit plant will spawn in both sides of the river every game somewhere between 6 and 6.5 six and minutes. So what you can copy is what Faker did here by trading all of his health to get the push over Chovy. Now, of course, in solo queue, you can't guarantee that your roam timers will result in a kill. There's just no coordination, right? But in the best case scenario, you can use this timing to roam and kill someone in another lane. Worst case scenario, you trade your health for a free turn, it doesn't work, so you just eat the honey fruit and go back to laning as normal. There's nothing to lose and everything to gain. And finally, we can't wrap this guide up without including at least one example of Faker's intelligent mid-game macro decision making. And what better replay to analyze than when Faker was in his base, teleported to mid lane, did literally nothing, then just shamefully walked to another lane. While that looks silly, this is one of those invisible moments we mentioned that makes Faker so good, and how he wins his team so many games through simple plays that even you can copy. Let's break down that teleport step by step so you understand why it was actually really impactful and how you can use this in your own games. So looking at mid lane before Faker teleported, notice that his teammates want to push the enemy wave, but they're kind of afraid to do so. This is because LSB's composition has an Ash and a Sejuani, two very scary pick-based champions. So, Faker's teleport wasn't to make a play. It was just to give his teammates the confidence to walk up and push the wave. This is what's known as mid-priority. The point is that your team pushes a wave into the enemy side of the map. This forces at least one of your opponents to have to clear the wave. While that happens, your team now has a momentary numbers advantage. You can then use this to establish vision control over one side of the map, typically where the next objective you're contesting will be. What's really nice about this play though is that it sets up an easy rotation to a side lane as you clear vision with your team in the river. So in this case, Faker made his way up to top lane while getting Baron control at the same time. Now he can push this wave out and you'll see the results of his seemingly terrible teleport. Swapping over to LSB's point of view, they've got zero idea what T1 is up to now. Not only that, but someone probably has to go clear this wave that Faker just pushed. T1 can now do anything, start the Baron, or even look for a pick, which is what they actually end up doing. They all set this up in the Fog of War to punish Silas for clearing this wave. And from there, this leads to a free Baron, which T1 then uses to close out the game. All of this off of Faker's one teleport. Okay, so that may look like it requires some deep team coordination to pull off and will be useless in your own solo queue games, but that cannot be further from the truth. All you have to do is group up with your team to push the wave in mid and get priority. Then you have a sweeper or a control ward in your inventory and just rotate over to a side lane, clearing some wards on the way. Push that side lane out and then regroup with your team. You can consistently achieve this in solo queue without any coordination. Whenever you tune into T1's games, pay close attention and you'll see just how often Faker does this exact rotation. It's very underappreciated, but it's one of the major reasons they can close out games so effortlessly. He syncs up with his teammates around mid, then he helps them by clearing vision on his way to a side lane. There, he pushes out the wave and then regroups with his team. He does this exact play constantly. While you may not have the level of synergy he does with his teammates, you have to keep in mind that this will be balanced in your own solo queue games by the countless mistakes your opponents make by comparison. Having vision control over an objective and pushing waves is a recipe for not only success in competitive play, but also in any elo that you may be in. Just watch how much importance Faker places on this subtle rotation when you watch T1, and you will quickly realize why you should be doing it every single game you can. To wrap things up, Faker is probably one of the easiest professional players to learn from by just watching him. You may not be able to imitate his mechanics, but a lot of the decisions he makes to win games are just simple fundamentals when broken down like we did here. You just need to have a keen eye and be looking for those subtle moments where he sets a play up and not just the flashy end results. Thanks for watching.